Hi, everyone. Happy to be here in the coveted after lunch spot. Um, so I'm Chris Erickson. I'm the COO and co-founder of Apartment List. And I'm really excited to share with you guys the story about how aligning incentives between both sides of our marketplace, the renter who is looking for a home and the landlord is looking for a lease, really changed the trajectory of our business and led to incredible growth over the last few years. Um, as I was putting this presentation together, I was like, wow, I wish I could say that this was a really premeditated decision and that myself and my co-founder, John, and I sat down and really mapped out how aligning these incentives in this business model would have this impact. Um, but the reality of the story is we made actually a bunch of mistakes along the way. We went through three different business models, and it wasn't really until sort of 18 months after we'd really aligned incentives be between both sides of our marketplace that we actually saw the benefit of it and really understood what it meant to our business and how it was fueling the growth that we saw today. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time telling you just real quickly what Apartment List is today and sort of how we're impacting the rental landscape uh, in the US right now. I'm gonna share with you guys the evolution of our business models over the past five years. Uh, what we did at each stage, what some of the positives were and really the pitfalls that led us to change to new models. And then once we got to the model where we had full alignment of incentives across both sides of the marketplace, the type of growth that that actually fueled. Um, and because I'm sort of a, a skeptic at heart, um, I'm actually gonna share with you guys all the real data behind what happened with our marketplace once we changed that business model. Um, and I got in a bit of a fight with our CFO to share it, but really wanna show you guys the power of what happens when you do align these incentives. Um, and then at the end, we'll come back and tie it into it. I think the really important lessons are that we learned and what happens when you really do align these incentives across both sides. So what is Apartment List today? Uh, real simply, Apartment List is a long-term rental marketplace that matches renters who are looking for a home with landlords that are looking to fill a vacancy. And where we're at right now after four years of this is we have eight million monthly renters on our site. We have five million landlord units available on Apartment List, which is about 12% of the total supply of all the rentals in the United States. Um, and in 2019, we're gonna do more than 1% of all the total leases in the US, accounting for about $8 billion of rental transactions that will occur as a result of renters and landlords matching on the Apartment List platform. Uh, so how did we get here? Um, it, it took uh, myself and John actually three different business models uh, to figure out something that was really going to work for us and something that was really going to allow us to grow the company. Uh, where we first started the business was a very simple lead-based business where we had landlords on one side, we were sending them leads, and we had renters on the other side. And all we knew was that someone on our side filled out a lead form and it went over and someone paid for it on the other side. Nothing else between that. Uh, we then evolved the business model to tours where we were actually helping book the tours, make sure a renter showed up for a tour, and then charging the landlord based on those completed tours. Um, that was a complete disaster, um, and I'll share with you guys what actually happened during that. And then we actually got it right at the end of the day, which was leases. We finally went all the way and we really said, hey, what really matters in this marketplace is someone's looking for a home and someone has that home that they wanna fill, right, with the, the vacancy there. And it was when we did that and made that connection that everything took off, and it was really in doing the hard work to make sure we knew that was happening across our marketplace. Uh, so how did we actually do this and what was the actual evolution of apartment list across this and why did we get here? Um, our leads business model. So we started here because it was actually simple for a lot of reasons, right? It was really simple to measure. It was simple to measure the product improvements, you knew what you were testing for, and all of the transactions and value that we were extracting happened on our platform. Um, it was also really easy to sell, which also turned into be one of the pitfalls. It's really easy to actually just price a lead and have someone buy that, but no one actually knew what the value of those leads were on the other side of the marketplace. And, and what we learned, what happens when someone doesn't know what the value is of what they're buying from you, what do they do and how do they make that decision? They make it 100% on price when they're looking at it against someone else, right? And so what we constantly found is every year, every time we went back to go negotiate with someone, it was just, hey, this person gave me a lower price, how much lower of a price are you gonna give me, right? And it really ended up being a race to the bottom. And then as you think about the, the product that you're building, 
you're actually just building a product that gets better and better at sending leads, right? And you can do that in a lot of ways. It doesn't necessarily create a ton of value for either of the people on either side of your marketplace, right? You don't actually have to go talk to renters and understand their pain points to get that much better at sending leads through a platform. Um, and then the last thing is it ends up being capped very quickly because there's not anything that differentiating about the product you're selling. You can't clearly articulate the value that you're creating to either side of your marketplace. Uh, so myself, John, and I were sitting there and saying, hey, we really want to win this category and we want to build a big lasting company, but we know the business model that we're in today, which is a leads-based marketplace, felt like it was capped from an opportunity perspective and we were not actually creating enough value either for the renter or for the landlord on the other side to build a big business and win this category. Um, also, it was a pretty crowded space from people offering very similar things. There were still a lot of sort of web 1.0 legacy companies in our category that maybe you guys have heard of, apartments.com, seen the Jeff Goldblum commercials, uh, apartment guide and all those guys. We weren't any different from them at any point to either renters or to the supply side. And it was actually really hard then to articulate what our value proposition was to either side. Um, as I mentioned before, there is definitely a race to the bottom in terms of price because everything was lead based. And every year we'd go back and renegotiate and get a lower price. So as John and I sort of looked at the ambition we had for the company, the challenges we saw with the current model, we said, hey, we really need to get closer to the value that we're creating for both sides of our marketplace. We need to get closer to actually the, what the renter wants to do and figure out how to really deliver that for them. And that's not just sending a lead through a platform to a landlord. And we need to do something super differentiated for the landlord because they don't know how to value what we're doing for them today, as well as we recognize that we needed way more supply to kickstart the flywheel in our marketplace. And so we thought about it, we talked to a few of our advisors, investors, a bunch of folks in the industry, um, and we said, hey, we don't think we can actually at this point go all the way to the lease. A bunch of folks with industry expertise said, you'll never get access to that data, you'll never be able to uh, track this online to offline transaction, um, but you still should do something that's closer to the transaction. So, you know, we looked at all the things that the renter does from when they book the appointment to show up for the tour to lease to all those things in the value chain and said, hmm, well, you know what, we can't get all the way to lease, so let's actually get them to tour and let's charge the landlords for the tour. So Evolution 2.0 was basically the worst possible business that you could imagine building as we tried to go down this value chain of getting closer to the renter and closer to the transaction. Um, first, it was really, really hard to scale, and we didn't necessarily have the same incentives as the renter on that side. We were building and running a call center in the middle of Soma, San Francisco, which as you guys can imagine is not a really cost-effective place to do that. Um, it was different to clients and they were interested, but it was actually really hard to sell to them and really hard to demonstrate and capture the value. So. When we had the, the lead model, um, everyone roughly looked at leads at the same, but it was a low cost item, so they didn't really um, worry too much about the quality or what actually happened when you sent them a lead. They just cared you were the same or slightly cheaper price than the other one. Um, tours was way worse because it was a way more expensive ticket item but no one actually knew the value of what they were paying for when they got it, right? So you went from $5 to $100, but people still couldn't connect that clearly enough with the value. And we had actually a really hard time getting landlords to sign up for that product because it was expensive, but it wasn't connected enough to the value that we were doing, which led to a lot of disputes with actually landlords and really tough for us to scale the supply side. Um, and then the other thing too that was really frustrating is our product only went halfway for renters, right? And you think about the other side of the marketplace is that it was better than just the leads because we were providing them some value, but in some ways it was actually worse because what is the most frustrating thing is actually to show up for a tour and actually it not be a good fit for you, right? And actually that was one of the incentives of our business was to book as many tours as possible. Um, and in the short term, it didn't matter if those tours were necessarily successful or not, right? So not a great experience for renters and unclear for landlords as well. Um, and what we basically had built 
was a bridge that was missing an entire span. We had renters on one side and we were getting them to the property, but we didn't actually know if they were getting the other side and being successful. And we had leasing agents and landlords there that were paying for something and they had no idea if actually what they were paying for was worth the value of what they're doing. They just knew it was expensive at the end of the day. Um, so the only good thing that came out of sort of business model 2.0 of apartment list and doing tours was in trying to prove the value of tours to clients, we actually figured out what was necessary and how we could actually fully enclose the marketplace. So we would know if a renter was on apartment list, what actually ended up happening at the property level. And we figured out how to actually solve and make that connection through technology and built an entire platform around that. So really apartment list 3.0 and the model we had was actually figuring out that missing span to allow us to connect both sides of the marketplace so we could have a fully aligned set of incentives. Um, and at this point, the entire business model of apartment list today and then was we only get paid by a landlord when a renter that we have sent to them moves in to their unoccupied apartment, right? That is completely fulfilling what the renter wants to do, which is find a great home, and it's completely filling in what the landlord needs in a way where the ROI is actually guaranteed of what the supply side is paying for us. So we have perfect alignment of incentives with our business model today. Um, it's really, really easy to sell, and this is one of the keys that we didn't realize as much at the time, is how critical it is to getting one side of your marketplace, either the supply or demand side, growing really quickly at the start and all the super positive benefits you see once that happens. Um, I often joke, and usually about once a week because our, our head of sales is always hitting his sales numbers, is that he literally has the easiest job in our company because he is going to landlords and he is selling something that is free and has a guaranteed ROI with the product, right? And as I show you what's happened on the supply side and how we've grown, you'll see that very clearly in the numbers and how quickly we've been able to acquire supply in this. Um, and then the thing that was really different about this model was it was really, really hard for us to actually build the infrastructure to enclose the marketplace, to actually know when there's a renter on apartment list and when they actually move in to then send an invoice and have that invoice get paid. Um, our dispute rate on things we bill for our clients because of this technology platform is right around one and a half to two percent, which is amazing from a performance-based model like this, which is an online to offline transaction with a really high ticket price. And the great thing about it is it was really hard to build, but it's a super important moat once you actually build the platform to align the incentives and complete the transaction. We are the only player still at scale in this category that is able to do anything like this for it. Um, so let me sort of show you what aligning incentives has actually done for our business. So uh, at the very end of 2014, it was November 2014, uh, was when we launched the pay for performance 100% lease based business model at Apartment List. Uh, we had half a million units on the platform at the end of 2014. And right here, you can see over the last four years, with almost the same size sales force um, over this, how quickly we've been able to add supply and units here. And today, we're over 12% of all the rental households. Uh, in America are on apartment list, and if a renter finds it moves in, we get paid for it. And this supply growth was 100% driven by the business model and incentive alignment of that business model with what we were doing for them. And this was really, really key to actually making our marketplace go, because the first thing we needed was liquidity on the supply side, so we could do a good job of matching renters with their home. And this is what's happened since 15, 16, 17, and 18, as we've added more and more supply to our platform. So what we have here is these are our um, cohorts of renters finding a home through apartment list and the rate at which they do. So 2015, which you can see back here, ties to about 1.7 million units. You can see ended up at about 0.6%. And each year as we've added more supply and been able to use that data to reinvest in the product as well, the value of our cohorts and the ability of us to match renters with the supply side has increased significantly because of all the addition of that supply on the platform. 
And then when you see the value of those cohorts increasing, you're able to really grow audience really quickly as well, right? You have more supply for renters to have a better experience on your platform as well. Your monetization engine really starts kicking in and a bunch of channels become available to you that weren't available before to actually start acquiring users or invest in new teams to invest in SEO or other growth channels to drive them to the platform. And so since we've made the switch to the 100% pay for performance model and charging for leases, we've seen a 3x increase in our audience as well over this time. And also, I think the thing that, that I'm actually most proud of, because one of the teams that I run at Apartment List is our product team, is adding that supply and then really making sure that renters have a great experience in finding the home on their platform, because that's what we care about. Our entire product team cares about matching a renter with the right home. Um, we're now seeing more than 20% of the transactions that happen on Apartment List came from a renter that was on Apartment List more than 12 months ago. Right? And that's the type of product you can build when you actually care about the success of the outcome, is you do things that make the renter journey better, that match them with supply better, and it leads to your users coming back more and more consistently over time. Um, and then sort of putting all of these things together, um, this is really how we think about our marketplace and getting the flywheel going and why the alignment of incentives has been so important to making this business successful. So we started with the new business model, which allowed us to really quickly add supply to the marketplace. As I showed you from those cohort charts, adding that supply really increased the match rate in our marketplace, increasing the match rate, both because renters knew they were gonna have a better chance of success and because it unlocked a bunch of new channels for us, really grew demand in our marketplace. And then your flywheel gets going because it became super easy on top of the performance-based model to sign up supply because our audience was everywhere. We would go into Houston and all the people we were selling to knew apartment lists because renters were already using apartment lists in the, the product. And so our sales efficiency actually has increased as our penetration in markets has gone up, which is not something you usually see. Is our, our cost per acquisition as we're getting further into the long tail with our supply right now is going down because of the demand and the name recognition we now have in these marketplaces. And so this is sort of you know, how all of these things add up and the way that we think about it is you sort of see that you add, you add properties and that's been, since we switched to the model at a pretty linear rate here, you have, on top of that, the registered users, which is our audience growth, the match rate, and the retention piece, and all of these things that the flywheel and alignment of the business model does, which has led to us growing leases and people we've helped find a home 13x since 2015, right? But all of this started when we actually figured out how to build a business model that completely aligned incentives between what the renters wanted on our platform and what the supply side wanted to fill in a way that was really risk-free and resonated how they do that. And then overall, this is what we've done. Uh, we helped less than 1,000 families find a home in 2014. Uh, we did 127,000 families found home through apartment lists this past year, and it's gonna be over 200,000 families are gonna find home on apartment list in 2019. And so again, sort of speaking to what happens when you get the incentives right, you, you get one side of the marketplace going and really building this flywheel, it has a really, really powerful impact on the growth you can have in your business and how all of these things work together. Um, and then one of the most exciting things as well about this is if we would have never gone all the way through to the lease, I think we would have stopped a lot of our user research and what we were thinking about building sort of just on the search side of what renters actually want to do. But everyone here knows, I'm sure you are either currently renters or have been at some point in time, right? It's not actually just about the search and discovery phase. There's all of these other different stages in the journey that you need to go through to successfully find a home. And since we are so focused on actually helping that lease happen, and we're connected to renters and hearing their pain points, we've started moving from search and discovery down to communication, and we're working on things that are helping with the transaction, and then eventually connecting with renters in their home where they live, so we can actually then be part of the full life cycle of things that they do and build a longer term relationship with them. Um, and I very strongly believe if we would not have gone down the path of actually trying to get the renter into the home and caring about monetizing the lease, 
we probably would have stopped just at this yellow search and discovery phase because we would have just been incentivized to send leads, focus on sending more leads, and be done at that point, right? But the transaction forced us to talk with more renters and really opened our eyes to what we could continue to build as we go down funnel with them as well on this. Um, and so as I sort of step back and I think about why aligning incentives really mattered um, to apartment list is, and it, it, we didn't, as I said, we didn't quite realize this at the very start, and it took us a while to see what was happening, but it was key to kickstarting the virtuous cycle in our business. If we would not have had something that was so easy to get supply onto the platform, we never would have seen these other benefits in the marketplace. So I, I would encourage anyone who's thinking about this to what is the, the business model and the incentive alignment you can offer to one side of your marketplace that makes it so easy to build liquidity in that piece of the marketplace. And that was key for us. And for us, it was supply. That was the thing that we had to get on. And once we had that, we could go attract renters with it. Um, something that it really did too internally was it made decision making for all of our teams really, really easy. Right, And is, this wasn't as important when we were small, but now that we're about 160 people, um, it's really important for people to have a clear way to make decisions without you know, the founders or the execs in the room. And for us, it's really simple. Will this feature decision or whatever I'm working on at the moment help more renters find home and help more landlords fill their vacancies? And actually having really clear decision making through the organization tied to those clear incentive alignment is really powerful. It helps teams move faster, it adds clarity to decisions, it makes it really easy to set up metrics to decide on tests and what criteria for success is. Um, the other part that I'm most proud of and for what we built for Apartment List is when you actually care about the transaction successfully happening and that's the only way you get paid, you really change how you think about building a product and the research you do on both sides of the marketplace to make sure they're happy. And so way more now with our lease-based model, we are talking to renters way more, we're talking to landlords way more, and we have a way better understanding of what their actual pain points are, and then make sure to build those into the product because solving those pain points for the renters and for landlords is how we keep this flywheel going and how we drive more liquidity and more success for apartment list. Um, the last, you know, I touched on earlier on the product side, like we now have exposure to what all these other down funnel opportunities are because we're part of the transaction and we care about the transaction. And that's unlocked a whole additional range of things and solutions and long-term monetization opportunities we can build for apartment list because we've done that. Um, and then the last thing is in addition to clarity and decision making, it's actually given a lot of clarity and company mission to everyone at our company, which I think is really important for a bunch of reasons, both from me personally, it gets me really excited to, to have a clear mission here, but as you think about building a company, especially trying to attract and retain talent in a place that's as competitive as we are here, having a clear mission that helps people, that really resonates, uh, not just externally, but internally with your employees, is really important, and we have a really clear mission. We're helping renters find a home that they can love, and that goes back to the decision making and everything that we bring into what we build uh, with it. So really it's been key to us is getting to this model to drive supply that's allowed us to really grow apartment list really quickly over the last few years, um, and we believe have a shot at, at building the, the one long-term rental marketplace in the US over the next few years. So. Yep. Yeah. so open it up for questions. Yeah. Going back to that point where you were iterating through your business strategy, yep. um, I, I lead the marketing in my company, and I imagine we're going to be going through some of these iterations ourselves. We just launched the marketplace, and yep. we're still trying to figure out incentive and pricing. <laughs> what did your marketing look like during that time? If you like tried to reread the story going back, does it look like you actually just evolved and just added new different things, or did it look kind of crazy if you were still trying to figure it out? Yeah, are you talking about sort of the supply side with landlords? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, how you were you were getting your message out there to acquire whatever your goals were at that particular degree. 
Yeah, so, so demand side, the renters, it continued to look the same because they didn't see that different of experience. But uh, supply side, we had to go through both an evolution of what our, what our go-to-market team looked like, right? So it wasn't just the materials, it was actually the structure of how we set up our sales team and how they were organized and the activities we comped. Uh, but then we, we had to make a very big pivot around from tours to leases. But for us, it was actually a pretty easy, easy transition because the reality is like our clients were so unhappy with tours that when we actually said to them, we're gonna actually bill you for the lease and here's the way that we're gonna do it, it was actually a story that resonated really well. And so, you know, the lesson that, that I take for that and hopefully as you're, you're pivoting and iterating to something else, it's something that you've learned from whatever you are currently in that you can use as part of that message to help make that transition, right? And so when we told that story, it's like, you know, we, we heard from you guys that you really liked the fact we were helping renters show up, but you were really uncomfortable that you didn't know what the ROI of the tour was you're paying for. We've solved that for you because now we're only gonna charge you when someone moves in, right? And, and the story actually went well with the transition. Um, and we also, at that time, had a, a head of sales who was phenomenal at selling literally anything. Um, and so I think that really helped the message as well, too. So, uh, yeah, in the gray? Yeah. Um, yeah, so how do you deal with, just one last question. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> how do you deal with the situation where um, incentives aren't aligned between both parties, right? So, like, if you have uh, somebody who's looking for a lease and a landlord, person looking for at least looking for the cheapest price, the landlord is trying to rent this space, and you're making the landlord problem to keep the apartment list, how do you deal with those situations? Whose side do you actually take? <laughs> That's a, a really good question. Which side do we take? Um, you know, we, we have an approach where we actually say we are, we are renter first in most decisions, not renter only, but we do believe that, that the consumer is how you win in a category like this long term. And so we start with the lens from their side in most of our decisions, but in all of our decisions, we, we do think through how does this impact the renter, how does this impact the landlord, and how does this impact the health of the marketplace at the same time. Cool, thank you.